Good morning. I um, hope you're all doing well. Um, it's kind of hard to know when you're doing this on Zoom, it's hard to know where to look at and whose face to look at. So <laughs> um, I'll wave at you all and smile at you all and you can pretend that I'm looking at you individually. <laughs> Um, but I suppose um, this morning, I guess I kind of drew the short straw in having to follow Lila. Um, I'm sure you all, um, as much as I did, really found so much value in what she shared with us. And in this um, strange and challenging season, I know that I really needed to be reminded of the fact that I am known by God. Um, and so I think this lockdown, I think certainly in our um, midweek on Wednesday, just as people were sharing, I think for a lot of us, this lockdown has brought um, greater challenges than the first and or first two. Um, and it's like, it's no longer a novelty. The weather isn't the same. We've had Christmas, it's in the past. There's not that looks to look forward to. And um, for a lot of us, there has been quite a heaviness with this time. And I think January can be quite a difficult time at the best, um, there's a sort of pressure that comes with New Year. And sometimes when January goes on, you start to realise that the things that you'd put or the uh, resolutions that you'd set, set up at the beginning of the year are starting to slip through your fingers and the diets or the exercise challenges are sort of slipping away. And I think there is often that pressure that we feel on New Year's and probably more so this year than in past years because of the year that 2020 was. I think, I don't know if you saw the um, meme that was going around that um, people were saying that they'd had their free trial of 2021 and they wanted to cancel their subscription, um, which is funny, but I suppose in some ways we have to realise that actually we don't have a choice. 2021 is happening, whether we um, want to have the subscription or not. And so this year, um, I think probably about two weeks ago, I was feeling a bit of weariness, kind of just felt, and partly it's this time of year, it's the weather, but um, just kind of lacking in energy but I knew it wasn't because I was, wasn't getting enough sleep um, I'll, not be I'll not tell you what time I normally wake up at the minute um, but I will tell you I've definitely been getting my eight hours of sleep so I knew it wasn't like a physical um, lack of sleep thing and so I began to question what was causing it and I realized that because um, over the duration of this lockdown that I've been furloughed and um, I was feeling a bit purposeless um, I've not got work to do necessarily every day and having to fill the time of the day without an exact thing to do or achieve um, my, my days in some ways were feeling a little bit purposeless um, and I suppose again it's even aggravated by the fact that um, I'm seeing friends and family who are working on the front line and who are just really flat out at the minute and stretched and we have lots of parents who are stretched by homeschooling and some people are even trying to do both and so it feels like a real um, contrast between um, where I'm at and where other people are at um, and so I felt the Holy Spirit say um, have you asked me what your purpose is for this season um, and that my purpose in this season wasn't to be busy or productive but to learn what fruitful what it is to be fruitful. I found in the first lockdown that um, partly not by choice, but I felt like God was um, allowing my pace of life to be slowed down and um, just the, to slow down the rush and the need to kind of fill every moment with activity. Um, we did a Zoom on New Year's Eve and in our breakout rooms we were asking the question, what, um, what have you learned from the previous year and what do you want to bring forward into the new year and what are your hopes for the new year? Um, and so one of the things I remember saying was that I didn't want to forget the things that we'd learned or that I'd learned in 2020. And that for me was that kind of slower pace of life and not rushing through everything. And I think sometimes when we, I think, well, I think in that moment, I sort of felt like, okay, I've kind of achieved that. I've got that slower pace of life down. Um, and sometimes when that happens, I think God challenges us, challenges us on it. Um, and, and sometimes that's to bring us to a deeper level. And so, um, coming into this season although that slower pace of life was there um in some ways what's the point on, on us learning these things if it's only for our own benefit um i think there is value in in it for us but i think it's important that when we learn these things we realize that it's for more than just our own benefit so this morning i would like to ask you some questions which will hopefully help you discern what it looks like to be fruitful for you in this season so what does fruitful, being fruitful actually mean? 
how would you define it? Is it related to your work? Is it related to your family, your friends, your children being fruitful and multiplying? Was it a command that God gave us? Is it a success, something to be achieved? Our culture probably equates being fruitful with productivity. And it can be quite a, an easy mistake to make that thinking being productive and being fruitful is exactly the same thing. Being productive absolutely has its place and this is not to shame productivity. Um, there's a time for it. And I'm sure there's many of us can think of situations like um, maybe standing in the supermarket queue, we like our checkout person to be productive so that we're not waiting for ages um, to get through the, the checkout. But I think there's definitely an overlap in productivity and fruitfulness. But I think the danger comes when we begin to think of pro productivity as the same as being fruitful. I think it's completely possible to be busy being productive with very little fruit. So how often do we sacrifice the fruitful things for the sake of being productive? Or to put it another way, how often do we allow doing things and being busy to detract from being fruitful? Because our culture eh, prioritises productivity, we equate being productive with success and it gives us our place in the world. It, it, it gives us our value rather than because of who we are. It gives us significance and it helps us, we base our significance on having measurable achievements or clear outputs for the investment of time that we've given. Because it's easier to, to use measurable things like productivity to determine our worth sometimes than it is in just by knowing who we are and being known by the Father. So how does God define fruitfulness? Henry Nouwen, um, Henry Nouwen said, there is a great difference between successfulness and fruitfulness. Success comes from strength, control and respectability. A successful person has the energy to create something, to keep control over its development and to make it available in large quantities. Success brings many rewards and often fame. Fruits, however, come from weakness and vulnerability. And fruits are unique. A child is the fruit conceived in vulnerability. Community is the fruit born through shared brokenness and intimacy is the fruit that grows through touching one another's wounds. Let us remind one another that what brings us true joy is not success, but fruitfulness. So if fruitfulness comes from a place of vulnerability, true vulnerability is found when we are rooted in the fact that we can know God and that we are known by him. So let's turn um, to John 15, if you have your Bibles there. You can read along. Um, I'm going to be reading it from the Passion Translation, so you might just want to listen as well. It says, I am the true sprouting vine, and the farmer who tends to the vine is my father. He cares for the branches connected to me by lifting and propping up the fruitless branches and pruning every fruitful branch to yield a greater harvest. The words I have spoken over you have already cleansed you. So you must remain in life union with me, for I remain in life union with you. For as a branch severed from the vine will not bear fruit, so your life will be fruitless unless you live your life intimately joined to mine. I am the sprouting vine and you are my branches. As you live in union with me as your source, fruitfulness will stream from you, from within you. But when you live separate from me, you are powerless. If a person is separated from me, he is discarded. Such branches are gathered up and thrown into the fire to be burned. But if you live in life union with me, and if my words live powerfully within you, then you can ask whatever you desire and it will be done. When your lives bear abundant fruit, you demonstrate that you are my mature disciples who glorify the Father. I love each of you with the same love that the Father loves me. You must continually let my love nourish your hearts. If you keep my commandments, you live in my love, just as I have kept my father's commandments. For I continually live nourished and empowered by his love. My purpose for telling you these things is so that the joy I experience will fill your hearts with overflowing gladness. So this is my commandment. Love each other deeply as much as I have loved you. For the greatest, of, the greatest love of all is a love that sacrifices all. And this great love is demonstrated when, we, when a person sacrifices his life for his friends. 
You show that you're my intimate friends when you obey all that I commanded you. I have never called you servants because a master doesn't confide in his servants and servants don't always understand what the master is doing. But I call you my most intimate friends for I reveal to you everything that I've heard from my father. You didn't choose me, but I have chosen you and commissioned you to go into the world to bear fruit. And your fruit will last because whatever you ask of my father for my sake, he will give to you. So this is my parting command. Love one another deeply. Jesus is reminding us that it's not by our actions or what we have done, but it's because of who he is that we get to be called sons and daughters of God. So what does Jesus mean when he talks about bearing fruit? Some people think the fruit refers to the gifts of the spirit or how many people we tell about Jesus or the good works that we've done. When Jesus is speaking about the fruit here, it's fruit that comes from abiding in him. He is speaking about the fruit that comes from spending time with him. In Galatians, Paul speaks of the fruits of the spirit and it's singular fruit of the spirit. So it's a collective rather than a list that we get to pick from. Collectively, this fruit will be evident in our lives. But the fruit of the spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness and self-control. Against such things, there is no law. For many of you, this is a well-known verse, and it might even be one that you learned like I did through a song in Sunday school. Um, And so actually, I would like to read these verses again, but from the message translation this time. Um, I don't think I'd actually read it in the message before um, this weekend, but sometimes it's quite a good way to just give you a slightly deeper meaning to the words, because sometimes the words, when they're translated, lose some of their original Um, meaning because there's not a direct English word that matches the original. So here is Galatians 5.22 from the message. It says, but what happens when we live God's way? He brings gifts into our lives, much the same way that fruit appears in an orchard, like like things like affection for others, exuberance about life, serenity. We develop a willingness to stick with things, a sense of compassion in the heart, and a conviction that basic holiness permeates things and people. We find ourselves involved in, lo- involved in loyal commitments, not needing to force our way in life, able to marshal and direct our energies wisely. But what happens when we live God's way? He brings gifts into our, oh, sorry. <laughs> among these things, among those who belong to Christ, everything connected with getting our own way and mindlessly responding to everyone else, a necessity is killed off for good. So the bearing of fruit, the fruit of the spirit comes forth by abiding in Jesus and walking in the spirit. Even though abiding or resting in Jesus gives the idea of being a passive thing, it actually requires activity from us. It means to live in such a way as that we are always found in him, living according to his word. If you abide in me and my words abide in you, Abiding in Jesus has to do with his words being in our heart. When the words of Jesus abide in us and have power in our lives, we live by the Spirit and the fruits of the Spirit become evident in our lives. It's clear that the bearing fruit is the calling of all Christians. And I think sometimes, if not often, we have the choice to allow ourselves to bear the fruit. I remember um, when, I think it was maybe when I was an intern, I remember David saying that he was quite careful about when he prayed um, for, for the fruits of the spirit, because if he prayed for them, like something like patience, um, often the result wasn't that he felt more patient, but that he was presented with situations in which he had to show patience. Um, and I think often that's the case. And, and so when we, Um, are looking for these things when we're looking for the fruits actually sometimes it's that not that we feel like we get them more but actually we're presented with more opportunities um, to show the fruits of the spirit Um, and the bible and and spending time in prayer and in the bible helps us to be more like jesus ultimately the choice is still in our hands we still have the choice to choose whether we actually bear the fruit of the spirit So when we bear fruit, is that what it is to be fruitful? 
Well, I think in part, yes. I think being fruitful is more about who we are than what we do. And Jesus is calling us to be more like him. And that looks like bearing the fruit of the spirit. But I believe that being fruitful will look and the outworking of will be different in each of our lives. And also because of the seasons that we're in, I think that affects what fruitfulness looks like too. So I think I want to encourage you to ask yourself the question, what does being fruitful look like for me right now in this season? If you feel an answer that you get in this moment, then please write it down and I won't be offended if you tune out for a moment to do that. Um, and if that even feels like an overwhelming question to ask right now for you, don't worry, because we're gonna break it down just a little bit more. I think sometimes it can help to identify the season that we're in. And I've found at times it matches, it can match the literal season as in winter, um, but it doesn't always. When it comes to gardening, seasons are so important. Um, I'm sure we've all tried fruit that was grown out of season and it just, it looked like it should taste good, but it just didn't have the, the sweetness of like how a strawberry should taste normally or um, sometimes the texture just isn't quite right. Last year, I'm sure um, if you're like me, you maybe spent a bit more time in your garden than normal and it got a bit more TLC um, than it has done in a long time. Um, and so I had planted lots of different flowers and plants and herbs and managed to keep them alive. And um, I had tried to grow some carrots. And so we'd got the seeds and planted them in the house and or not in the house, but in little tubs and had them in the house until they took um, until they took root. And then when it was time, planted them in the garden. And so every few days I kind of went over and had to check on them and would water them if it was a bit dry or um, just keeping an eye on them. And they didn't really seem to be making much progress. Um, but I thought we'd keep, keep being persevering with them and keep watering them. And um, I think we even got some food um, to add to the water to feed them. But there still wasn't much growth. And then one day, it'd been a few days since I'd, I'd gone over to look at them. Um, I just noticed these massive green shoots coming out from the, the tub that they were in. Um, and so as I got closer, I thought, wow, these have just really taken off. And I could even see a little bit of the, um, the orange of the carrots peeking through the soil. And then I realised that there was maybe something a bit suspicious. Um, it turns out my mum and dad had found uh, carrots from the shop that still had their leaves attached and decided to plant them in beside my carrots. <laughs> um, so while they were yummy, they weren't my carrots. Um, and my carrots didn't quite come to anything more than about that size. And it turns out I think I planted them too late um, in the season. So it is important, seasons matter um, when it comes to gardening. Um, and so knowing the season is important and knowing the timing that we're in is important. The winter months um, are often associated with dark and cold. Um, there's not a lot of life around. So this is a season of perseverance. Being fruitful looks like being patient. It's a season where there doesn't look like things are growing. It doesn't look like things are ever going to grow. And we don't tend to see the fruit of our labour in this season, although we may spend lots of time working. Seeds can be planted in this season, but won't, won't start to grow until the warmer weather comes in. But even before we see the growth of those seeds, they have to go down deep before they can begin to grow up. And that sometimes happens in this season. So this season requires us to trust God, to trust in the promises he has made us and in what we know to be true. The winter season requires endurance. I am the true sprouting vine and the farmer who tends to me is my father. He cares for the branches connected to me by lifting them up and pruning them to yield, sorry, pruning every fruitful branch to yield a greater harvest. This can also be the season of pruning. It's where we cut away the dead branches and remove old parts or broken parts to make space for where we need new growth. And I think a lot of what Lila shared last week guides us to navigate this season well, the helpful things and the unhelpful things, and whether that's personally or whether it's for someone that we know. So in this season, being fruitful can often look like perseverance. When we come to spring, there comes a, a time of more hope. We begin to see that those roots that have gone down deep begin to show signs of life. 
the shoots begin to break through the surface. And these, they're really small, um, but we get to see these little signs of life. And initially there can be excitement when we begin to see those, but it can be quite quickly overcome and overlooked um, because we get busy with being productive and rushing around. And so we may not even, or we may forget about these little signs of life of the seeds being, um, the seeds coming to fruition. So it's important in this season to be aware of what is nourishing the shoots. Are they getting enough sun? Is, are they getting enough water? Does the soil have enough nutrients? So what does that look like? It looks like making sure that we're feeding ourselves physically and spiritually. Are we making time for the Bible? What rhythms have we established? Are they helping us or are they hindering us? Are we looking after our mental health? Are we exercising? Do we have time and space for others, for ourselves, for God? The space that is often needed for deep fruitfulness to happen. We need to be intentional about creating it. In this season, being fruitful may look like evaluating how we are using our time. What do we need to add and what do we need to take away? When we come to summer, this is a season where it gets warm. It's hard to do lots of strenuous work because the, the temperatures are hopefully a bit warmer. Um, and so this in some ways is a season of abiding. We trust in the work that's been done in the, the winter and in the spring. And we know that the, so the seeds have now established into strong plants, hopefully, and, and trees. Um, and those rhythms that we established in the springtime will sustain us until the harvest. In some ways, this season could be called a season of waiting, but actually, I think sometimes when we label it that way, we relinquish our responsibility of the season. While it might seem counterintuitive, rest requires action. It requires, to, it requires us to actively participate and to make space for it. <clears throat> rest is a very necessary season, but also a necessary element of each season. Often we mistake sleep or relaxing watching Netflix as rest. And sometimes that is the rest that we need, but there's actually a lot more to rest. I read a TED article recently um, by a lady called Sandra Dalton-Smith, and she identified that humans require seven types of rest. And often that we try to treat each of these seven types with one solution, which is often sleep. So there's physical, mental, sensory, creative, emotional, social, and spiritual rest. Each of these types of fatigue that we can get require a different solution. For example, she suggested that when we require creative rest, that we should spend time in nature. Or if you are in a space of needing some spiritual rest, that engaging in something greater than yourself, such as prayer, meditation, or community involvement. In this season, being fruitful may look like accepting a slower pace, learning what real rest is and what the rest is that you need and learning to abide. Abide in me and I in you, as the branch cannot bear fruit by itself unless it abides in the vine. Neither can you unless you abide in me. I am the vine and you are the branches. Whoever abides in me and I in him, it is he that bears much fruit. Then we come to the autumn. The fruit is ready for a harvest. Last year, um, when we had our hour of walk in the day or exercise in the day, we spent a lot of time walking around some of the back roads and the farm roads around Rich Hill. Um, and in case you didn't know, Rich Hill or Armagh is famous for apples. There's lots of orchards, um, and particularly around here, there's lots of orchards. And so we got to see the, the journey of the apple trees from winter to spring to summer. Um, going from bare, bare branches to full of leaves, then to full of flowers, and then finally to full of fruit. Um, we actually got some and we've made them into different things, including crumbles and um, cakes. And so this season of um, harvest requires action. It can be a busy season, but there'll generally be a flow or an ease to it. It'll feel more like thriving than striving. And while it will include being productive, it definitely will feel fruitful. It's really important that we keep an awareness of the season. 
so that we can set our expectations accordingly, to allow us to fully navigate that season well and to navigate it fruitfully. So just as I'm finishing off, I'm gonna give a few ideas of how we can continually seek what it is to be fruitful. So the first one is prayer. Now it might seem obvious, but generally that's a good place to start. Praying for um, God to speak to you about what fruitfulness looks like. Praying that he would reveal any lies that you might be believing about your value being based on what you do or don't do. And asking for a fresh perspective on what the season is and what you should expect from it. The next one is um, being aware or mindful. It can help sometimes when we pray to write down things or to journal. And so it's important to ask questions and specific questions. So sometimes it will look like things um, asking, how did I abide in Jesus today? What did fruitfulness look like today? If there's, if there's a day or a time where you feel like I've not been very fruitful, but I've been busy doing lots of things, then maybe you should ask the question, what would fruitfulness have looked like in this day or in this moment? Or how could I have done it differently that it would have been a fruitful thing rather than a productive thing? Even asking what you were feeling in those moments when you felt that it was you, were, you weren't being fruitful and how you feel about it now. The next one is changing how we talk or changing our vocabulary. vocabulary. Being aware of the words that you use. Are, you, are the words you use revealing that you're someone who values being productive or being fruitful? Are you abiding or are you um, resting or are you being busy? The next one is connected. Are we really connected? Are we abiding in Jesus? Are we resting in him? Are we daily making space to abide in him? Are we incorporating habits and rhythms that create space for that to happen? And are we connecting with our community and the people around us? Are we inviting them in on this journey? Are we having conversations about what it looks like to be fruitful for us? Because we're not meant to do this alone and these are conversations that um, it's important to be having with one another as we journey together and we can get prayer and we can ask for prayer and we can journey these things through together. And the last one is that we live in grace. Ultimately, this is not about condemning anyone for um, being busy and being productive, but it's a journey to becoming more like Jesus. When we Not that focusing on productivity is bad, it just means that we miss out on the freedom on, and the joy that God is calling us to in being fruitful. So let's remind one another that what brings us true joy is not successfulness, but fruitfulness. Abide in me and I in you. As the branch cannot bear fruit by itself unless it abides in the vine, neither can you unless you abide in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. Whoever abides in me and I in him, he it is that bears much fruit. Amen. I'm going to hand back to Neil um, just to close us off. Thank you so much, Amy. The, honestly, the only reason I wanted you to hand back to me is that I could publicly just honour you and thank you for that. That was, uh, that was wonderful. Incredibly rich, incredibly deep. And uh, and so really, I, I just wanted the opportunity to say that. And, and so to make sure that those that are listening in, play, like engage with this. If you haven't fully caught it because of all that's maybe going on around the house, uh, this is one of those rich words in the season that we're in that uh, that you should have on repeat. Um, and I and, and so I'm just so conscious of this idea. The, the reality is that spring's coming. Uh, it's it's coming physically in our calendar. The spring is coming, but we want to hold on to hope that spring's coming, sort of like uh, metaphorically too. Like it feels like we're in this winter season. All that's going on around us. But there's this idea of the, the hibernation of the winter season. It gives us this opportunity to receive, to remain, to abide, conserve all that we need for the spring that's ahead. 
And so that's why I think what Amy has brought to us is really important this morning. Because we want we want the hibernation of the winter season to give us the chance to receive, to remain, to abide for all that we need for the spring that is ahead. And whether that applies to your own life, to your family, to your community, I think it is really important. So bless you, Amy. Thank you. And thank you for those that have, have watched, have engaged um, over Facebook or YouTube. Uh, if you're watching this on later on in the week, we pray that you would know the blessing and the peace of the Lord. So Father, we thank you for this time, all that we've sang, all that we have um, just offered in our own quiet reflection. Thank you that you see that and you hear that, you know that. And, um, and so God, we continue to offer our lives. God, I pray that you would help us to be ones, to be a people that will continue to offer our lives as a living sacrifice. And, um, and so God, I just pray that you would bless us, those that are around us in this winter season, in this season of hibernation. God, I just pray that we would be able to still love really well. And uh, God, we would see um, the fruit of the Spirit come alive in us, God, as we put our roots down deep. God, help us to know what that looks like for each one of us. God, I pray that we would meditate, reflect really well on what we've heard today. God, so I pray that you would bless Amy, bless her home, um, bless every home that is listening in, engaging with what we're, what we're looking at today, what we're talking about. God, I pray that you would um, be so pleased with all that's said and done. God, we live a li our lives this week that just know that, uh, that we are loved and that we're seen, that we're known. Um, in Jesus' name, amen. Thanks, everybody. Have a great day. Have a great week. Uh, stay in touch. Well, uh, yesterday, I'm and blessing each other. Please, um, please, uh, please continue to, to engage. Thank you. Chat soon.